Hello once again, Jose Rodriguez here. A lot of people ask when they begin to use, say, a brand new printer they just purchased, they set it up, they do everything that the instructions say for you to do, install the printhead if it's a Canon printer, uh, install the ink cartridges, uh, prime the printhead, perform a nozzle check, perform a head alignment, and now you're supposedly ready to start printing your own images and really that's not what you should be doing right at this moment you should be printing a standard evaluation image and this is the most commonly used one when i installed the 8550 behind me even though i had never used a printer such as that i did not immediately go into printing my regular images because how would i know that that printer is actually reproducing what I see on my screen accurately or semi-accurately. I have to use some sort of control image and that is this one here. Now what this represents is a scientifically created image that contains all sorts of calibration, if you will, type components. And I'm gonna walk you through the a website I found the so-called evaluation image it is called the evaluation image v002 let's jump at that and see what that looks like online that way we'll get the most accurate rendition on this video of that image now the reason to do this is just like when I worked in a biological lab you needed negative controls and positive controls to verify that the assays that you are running, the results are believable. Okay, so the same thing happens here. If I start printing unknown images, basically by that I mean images that I shot with a certain camera, certain lens. Again, cameras and lenses are not perfect. Their sensors do not reproduce what is projected onto them by that lens absolutely accurately no they're not so you load them into your editing system and now you are editing them on what on your screen is that screen accurately displaying the values that are contained in that file you don't know that until you calibrate your screen and you calibrate it to a standard a control if you will so now we have absolutely assurance that our screen is displaying our images correctly. So now, whatever changes we choose to make, that's on us. We want to make it lighter. We want to make it a little bit darker. We want to change the color balance, warmer, cooler, whatever. If we do that, we can be assured that the actual changes we are doing reflect what we are seeing on our screen and we're not being fooled. Now, it's our printer able to reproduce that as accurate as possible well we don't know that yet we have to run that control image through the printer before you do anything else don't even try to do your own prints yet run the evaluation image and you should be able to get a result similar to this meaning it is neutral it is not too light it is not too dark but how do i determine that well, here is a ramp that goes from black all the way to near white. Can you see all of the tonal changes across that ramp? My 8550 has a little problem right here in this region, as you can see. It tends to sort of block the first few tones. Okay? That's how you determine. Because then if you see that on your own prints, you're going to think it's your images. And it's not. It's the printer. The printer is not able, on this particular paper, this is premium mat from Epson, using the correct ICC profile. As you can see, it sort of has an abrupt, abrupt change right here. Okay? The neutral photo in the center seems pretty much neutral throughout. The strawberries, at least in front of me right now, I don't know about video, but in front of me right now, they look red. Everything else looks pretty normal. It's just 
right in this region right here. And that might be something that you can fix by using black point compensation, which I don't remember whether I did or not. Most of the time when you print, either through the printer driver and you choose ICM printing mode so that it will link the correct ICC profile with the actual Epson paper that is meant to be used on an Epson printer, you will get good results. But at this point, I was not using black point compensation. I'm going to have to do that again and see if that makes a difference. But this is really only the first two, four, six, eight, ten. Most people, in most people's photographs, those first few steps are blocked. They just become a dark gray or a black. That is just normal for most printers. That's why they came up with black point compensation. When you are printing, using color management from any application, that is color managed like Photoshop, Lightroom, and QImage. It will allow you to choose between no black point compensation or yes. Now, if you were to soft proof, and if you don't know what that is, that's another subject. Basically, what it allows you to do is through your printing application, you can actually look at your image as if you were looking through it through an ICC profile filter, a magic filter. And it will tell you exactly, well, as close to exactly how your print is going to turn out using that particular profile, that particular paper. In other words, the profile is created for a certain paper. I'm going to look through that magic profile filter and it's going to show me what the print is going to end up looking like. If you click on black point compensation, you just might see all of your shadows open up a little bit. If you undo that, you will see them block up. Now, it depends on your image. If you shadow those little tiny nuances at the bottom of the uh, ramp or black to white scale, if you will, if they're not important, then you just let them go black. Who cares? You know, it depends on your, I guess, view of how that image should look like. Do you want it completely opened up? Or do you want those shadows to go away? They're not important. Then undo black point compensation. It's your choice. That's why they make it able for you to either turn it on or turn it off. Now, you're going to go ahead and load that image. You're going to print it. And now you're going to examine it. And that will tell you what that paper through that printer is capable of producing. Simple. Whether it is a 8550 a Pro 100, a P800, a P900, any kind of printer, you will first run that image through it. And that will tell you what the printer is capable of. The more inks, the more colors it has, the more capable it will be to include a wider gamut of colors. In the center area, you see right here a row of patches the image itself, those patches are out of gamut. They're impossible to be printed. Even with the best printer we have available today, it is impossible. They have made those colors incredibly out of gamut on purpose. With the, I guess, the idea that in the future there may be some printers that will come close to be able to reproduce those colors. Let me jump over to the screen and I will show you what the image looks like. Okay, unadulterated digitally all right let's go okay look so you can see right here in the middle we have that standard image and it is grandiose you notice right here on that ramp i don't have that abrupt change it is gradual it goes from two that would be two 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 if you were to use your eyedropper in photoshop and you want to take a value reading of that area there it will be two 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 four 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 six 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 and so on it is gradually getting lighter you should not have an abrupt change like i have here if you look at my little section on the uh, left you will see that i do have that abrupt change another component these are the most important ones that they have nothing to do with images these are the ones that have to do with images here and they contain basically commonly available images that you may encounter but let's go ahead and concentrate on this first so we have also, besides the black to white ramp, and again, like I said, you should be able to see even the 254. 
the outside as you can see right here it is black that is zero 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 a 24 is clearly visible surrounded by a black background and it gets darker and darker and darker and finally it gets to the point where you can barely see the two two the two 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 or the four 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 again these are made specifically that way to to really test the capabilities of your printer in fact some some might say this image outperforms any printer out there available and it's done on purpose if we had a very simple image then any printer could print it no problem right we need to have an image that exceeds or excels what most if not every printer out there can produce the next thing we want to look at is our graduations or the transitions it goes from black to white just like here just a little bit narrower we have saturated red blue and green all the way to black saturated red blue and green all the way to white and then we go into our secondary colors cyan magenta yellow saturated cyan magenta yellow saturated the same way from saturated to white and from saturated to black you should not have any abrupt changes or or like banding from one tone to the other it is very very gradual it should be the same as you see it on your image now if you see any problems it might be also your monitor my monitor is not the best monitor in the world it's a very very old monitor made by hp it was good enough back in the days i don't have any reason for me to switch to a more modern you know several thousand dollar monitor because this one just does the job good enough for me for what i do now the portraits so we're looking at skin tones here are the skin tones that you see on your print natural looking and you can come back and look at the original image and see often what will happen is that the lit side the high lit side of the face will look correct and then the shadow side will have a slightly cooler tone to it you cannot have that absolutely that cannot happen if if that happens you have a bad icc profile okay that's what i have discovered in my testing then you have a still life display here as well as here you have some passport cards color cards these are all control cards these are used in the business uh in studio type photography where you're working under a control environment you look at this does it look natural everybody recognizes this scene this is in the uh, grand canyon area again you know those rocks are always going to be orangey brown look at the sky it's a very slightly very gradual transition from the top that you can see through this opening here down you better not have any banding there it should be a smooth transition and these are the things you're going to be looking at the aspen trees in the fall they turn yellow the bark is white almost neutral maybe with a slight tint of yellow you're looking at that and you're going to determine is that being displayed correctly visually to my eyes this little photo here is kind of strange we have a black pure black zero 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 square right here in the corner and then you have what looks like a maybe a dvd or a vcr player with some electronic components but the only thing that you see that's actually has any color is this belt right here this cable i mean and you see a component very similar to something like this but attached to a cable and you have multicolor wires again here you have kind of a little bit of green right here most of it is neutral relatively neutral again you're not supposed to see a color cast here you're supposed to see very very subdued colors the strawberries while well, the leaves should be green the berries should be red here you have a little bit of orange here you have a deeper reddish toward sort of toward magenta almost color that should look the same you see on your screen sunset wow this only contains yellows oranges dark browns maybe a little bit of a magenta color here again just look at your original on your screen and see what your printer was able to produce here is a hardened lava flow and you seem to have let me go ahead and magnify this so you can see what i'm talking about you seem to have areas here that are kind of bluish okay anything that's in the shadow is bluish anything that's on a highlight area is more toward the warm side 
Okay. And here, as we discussed earlier, these colors are out of gamut, impossible to be reproduced correctly. If for some reason your deep blues, cyans are reproduced dark, then something is wrong with your inks. The inks that you are using may not be very good quality or you may need a custom ICC profile. Now, these two greens right here are supposed to be different, yet my monitor cannot reproduce the differences between the two. But when I print it, it actually does it. The electron micrograph right here in the center, it is neutral. It is black right here, black here, and it's black right here as well. And we have a specular white area here. There's some detail there that I can still see. You should be able to see all of that on your print. And it should be neutral. Everywhere along this image, there should be nothing but neutral grays. You should not be able to see any any hint of color whatsoever. So there you go. This is what the standard image is for. It's a calibration tool. It tells you how well your printer can perform. How well can your printer reproduce this extremely difficult image on whatever paper you choose to test on? The person that asked the question initially had no clue what to do with that image. And to put it simply, it is just a way for you to verify your printer's ability. You may have bought a brand new printer. You're excited because it's a new model that was just produced last year, for instance, and you finally found one for a good price. You ordered it. You hope that it exceeds the quality of your previous printer. The way to know that is to have a standard image from the previous printer and a standard image from the now new printer and then compare the two. Assuming, of course, you used similar or the same identical papers if they're the same brand printer and you did your color management correctly, that way you can tell the difference between the two. Each setup will produce the maximum quality old printer, maximum quality, new printer, maximum quality, same exact paper, compare the two images, and that'll tell you the difference. Now, here's the catch. Now, this is what everybody's going to ask. Can I then start printing my images? Well, when I look at this, I see nothing but a neutral, linearly neutral result, even though it has a little bit of blockage right here. I know that my printer is capable. It may simply be because I printed on matte paper. Okay, It may be that. Who knows? Had I printed this, say, on a glossy paper, remember those inks are dye-based? It may have been a, a better result. In other words, I may have included more tones in this area here. But now here's what I got to do. I got to take this and I got to actually put it next to my monitor and do this. Does my print match what I see on my monitor? What I see on my editing application? And by the way, you open it and you print it. You never edit, adjust any way, shape or form this image. It has to remain pristine the way you downloaded it. No changes whatsoever. Does it match? If it matches, you're good to go. If it does not, then you have to recalibrate your monitor. The idea is that you printed that control image under control conditions, and now you have to match what that control image looks like on your screen to that near perfect result you obtain from that new printer. It may require a slight adjustment of the color temperature. When you are calibrating your monitor, you can do that. You can adjust the white point, make the screen a little bit bluer, make the screen a little bit warmer, cooler, warmer, until you reach that point where it looks neutral to you and it matches that output. That's it. Now you're done. Now you have a thermostat that when you set it to 300 degrees actually heats the oven to 300 degrees. You see what I'm getting at? Accuracy here. This has to match that. This is my oven. This is my thermostat. I set it to 300, this better be 300. If this is 250, something's wrong. I have to adjust my 
thermostat. Calibrate my thermostat. You see what I'm getting at? Yeah. That's that's how you achieve that match. What people dream about getting that screen to print match is never going to match a hundred percent. It's only going to be a happy close match. Okay, just get that through your head. You want it to be neutral and you want the print to be neutral. You want the density that you see here to be reflected here as well. You're dealing with backlit super bright type conditions to dull as hell paper paper is dull by comparison to what you see on your screen so always be aware that when you look at a print view by reflective light it's never going to look like a print on a transparent material viewed by transmitted light day and night the difference so get that through your head and accept the fact that your prints are always going to look duller than what your monitor is displaying. That's the truth, okay? Accept that, please, I accept that. That'll save you a lot of anxiety. I've gone through that, believe me. All right, that's enough for now. Thanks so much again, as always. As always, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye.